Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to use a real life practical use case. In this instance, uh, you guys can use uh, data sets if you guys have any from Amazon FBA or you guys have any from, uh, you know, uh, any time series data from not just Amazon FBA, but um, any other platform. In this case, use we're going to use my wife's uh, eBay sales account. Anyways, guys, you, uh, guys, feel free. Uh, and also, if you guys want to go more in depth in this tutorial, I've got another one for time series way far back with an LSTM also. And it's more in depth and it's with a data set from Kaggle. You okay, guys? And then, guys, uh, just so you know, um, uh, my channel is more... Uh, machine learning engineering before and now it's more on the data science side so be advised if you guys are here already you guys might see need some google cloud deployments some ml pipelines some azure deployments two one is a web service one is a endpoint uh you guys name it i got it check out my whole channel i got reinforcement learning and I've got many Streamlit app deployments, including AI web apps. You name it, I got it. I got neural translation machines, regular machine learning. It doesn't matter. Uh, check out my whole channel. I've got something for everything. I've got nearly every AWS SageMaker deployment also, every type of model itself, not just ML pipelines. So if you guys are here already, feel free to check it out and share. Now, anyways, guys, let's get to it. Okay, so uh, read it with pandas, df head. So guys, as you can see in a time series, we're going to use two columns, the date and then the thing we're forecasting. In this case, we're going to do uh, the net payment amount. And we're going to need to do some feature engineering, the net amount, because... As you guys know, um, time series, they, uh, they make, uh, in a lot of these sellers at things, they put timestamps and they put all kinds of inconvenient things. So you got to find ways around them. As a data scientist and a machine learning engineer, you will need to do similar things as well. You will, you will need to do feature engineering, which I'm about to go into. Okay, guys, so read it. Look at the head, look at the data frame. You guys can apply your own project to this as well. Just change here and change accordingly. Read it with the number of rows and columns. We're gonna transform the data frame again. And then columns equal, use columns equals columns. Okay. And then we're gonna take those two columns for, and then we're gonna make a totally new data frame. By the way, look at DF info. Okay. First, we need to get rid of the timestamp. Now, here's the thing. I had to use, I couldn't use float right here, so I had to use integer to make it work. It couldn't convert it to a float. Okay. By the way, yeah, this is my wife's sales. Uh, you guys can also make side money if you guys wish, uh, you know, doing the seller's apps. Uh, some months have been good, some months have not. Anyways, guys, uh, the payout date is X. The net amount is Y. And as you can see, most of the time she does good. It's just there's a lot of refunds. It gets confusing. There's refunds. There's big profits. There's returns. Uh, I chose net amount. I could have chose, uh, chose another column in there, but I chose net amount. Um... Anyways, guys, because I wanted to take everything into consideration, not just, uh, you know, what was sent over. Anyways, guys, um, plus, this is only her years to date uh, sales. So this was not previous years. So basically, this was her years to date. Um, anyways, guys, um Merge it, index, write index equals true, and then look at your new data frame. And then we're going to use an LSTM, DF2 as type float. 
Okay, min max scalar, this range, transform DF2. DF3 equals that transformed. Train size integer lim, DF3. The train, we're gonna do a little splicing. You guys see you guys do all that right there? Look at the new, look at the lin now. Now we're gonna create the data set. Guys, remember LSTMs, uh, they're actually very useful in neural translation machines. See my other videos. Remember guys, they're short-term long memory. So they're better with uh, shorter tasks, which is what gets complicated with really long paragraphs in uh, neural translation itself. That's one of the issues Google Cloud had. I mean, uh, uh, Google Translate. Anyways, guys, um, be advised. Uh, you're looking at the code right here while I'm talking. We're going to need to create the data set, and we're going to need to use a lot of MP arrays. And then we're going to create that. And then the look back function. Remember, guys, that's very important in neural translation machines. It goes through one cell and out the other. See more uh, documentation for LSTMs if you guys are new to them. Okay. Reshape. Reshape. Sequential. Three. You guys can use another neuron right there. It's not like my convolutional neural networks. See those where I explain more in depth how to use convolutional neural networks, which, guys, I want to talk to you also. Convolutional neural networks are being used in time series as well. So if you guys put a four right there, it probably won't be bad even with your data set. Feel free. And then dense one. Feel free to add more neurons. Of course, you got to take that into consideration. And then your look back function and your input shape because of the range, remember? Mean squared error because we got to score it. Optimizer Adam, train X, train Y, epochs 20, verbose 2, and the batch size because we don't have too much. Okay. And as you can see, it's, it performed pretty good. That's a pretty low root mean squared error, isn't it? Predict it, and then we're going to plot it. Model predict train X, model predict X. Okay, now we're taking a quick look at it. And then here's how to plot your prediction. You guys can put uh, train predict also if you guys want in there. But splice at this index. See my other more in-depth for uh, scoring it, and then the predicted line, and then the actual. See my other video for that. This is kind of more for fun. However, you, you see, guys, how you can use this in uh, use cases for yourself or for other people. Even for a friend. Let's say a friend knows you have these skills. He wants to know, hey, uh, how's it going to look from now? Will you tell him? Give me your data. Let me see what I can do. Let me see if there's timestamps on there and locks. Let me see if I can get around it. Or let me see if it's totally straight. Anyways, guys, let me do some feature engineering, and here we go. Now, you guys, you guys remember in your data set, you guys can use other ones. Like I could use gross transaction amounts. You guys see? And guys, be advised, on Google Colab, uh, there's one thing we can do. Remember, we can change the runtime type if we have a convolutional neural network to TP4, remember? TPU, I mean. And one more thing, you guys see? Um, if I want to open this image in a new tab, I can. And also, one more thing. Um, change this right here if you want it bigger. And uh, splice at that index if you know what you're doing. Feel free to add more more stuff in there, like Y predict, and then, uh, I mean, uh, Y, if you want to cross-validate, remember, you can add uh, test Y. You can add test Y if you want to cross-validate and do some visualization. Combine that in there. See my other video for that, remember? I did another time series a way back where I did both, where I cross-validated, and then I put it in the same data frame. 
Now, guys, remember, some data sets are more easier to convert to floats as type of float. <coughs> you know? Just letting you guys know. Just letting you guys know there's other data stuff in your data frame. However, you need a date for the time series for the steps. Just remember that. And guys, just so you know, if you're not if you're new to my channel, there's a lot more on here. There's over 130 videos. It's probably something you need. I've even got cybersecurity and machine learning. I've got clustering DNA results for Ancestor. I've got all kinds of stuff. So if you're here already, there's probably something you need. Anyways, guys, uh, feel free to share and like my videos if you like them. Share them with other people who might need them. Comment to tell me what other kind of videos you guys might want. That might help me out a lot. Okay? And also, guys, be advised, I'm going to get back on the cloud later on in the future. Anyways, guys, practical use case, something you can do. See my other video for more in-depth. Anyways, guys, I hope you like my tutorial. Until next time, thank you. Bye.